All right, guys, we are back here with another great episode of Basscast Radio. <clears throat> I am your host, Brian Carter, and uh, to my left is Hank the Bass Geek. What's up, brother? You know, man, same old thing, just uh, dropping some vidges, you know, putting the videos out there. Dropped one yesterday, a uh, review series I call the Average Angler uh, review series. We re yes. re review a little bit of everything. You know, we don't, we don't get into the specs a whole lot. You know, we, we do what every angler does. You know, I, I do, a I do an, uh, you know, I open the box, do a first reaction, you know, take it out of the box. You know, what's the first thing you think about? You feel the weight of it. Yeah. You know, then you think about, well, okay, does it feel like a solid reel? Does it feel plastic? You know, does it feel quality and so you know we we give each kind of one of those standard ratings a five star uh mm -hmm. rating and then uh, i use it so it's not an unboxing i use it for about you know a month two months three months there you go and then we do the on the water so after it's been used for a little bit we break down some more stuff you know how well does it cast how loose is it does the drag work well does the uh, a spool tension, you know, the braking system worked the way it should. Does it hold braking right. position? So, and then we give it a, an overall comparison. And then at the very end, we compare in that price range, like this is a $70 reel. So what we do is we just say, okay, this is a $50 reel, give or, you know, give or take 20 mm -hmm. bucks. In that category, we give our top five that we reviewed. <clears throat> so and that was from uh 13 fishing correct it was yeah see fishing. i saw the video so i hope you guys saw the video and i haven't <laughs> shared it yet i'll be honest i haven't had a chance to share it i was kind of uploading some content myself today and uh getting caught up from the weekend because uh saturday me and daniel went up on the james river for the northern open and uh it was it was good to get back up there man i haven't i usually go up there guys about probably once maybe twice a year but uh it's a really cool place awesome place um and uh it was actually just good to see friends and mm -hmm. you guys all know john sokup big country john sokup yeah third place finish cashing a really nice check there this past weekend you guys hopefully have listened to all the episodes with this man I don't know what to say. I, I, I'm hoping this year, but if it ain't this year, next year will be a Bassmaster Elite Angler. Oh, yeah. I I don't doubt it to be it. I yeah. mean, he's, <clears throat> you know, I joked with him the other day. I said, you just need to stay away from the Highland Reservoirs like yeah. Cumberland and Cherokee. <laughs> but, man, everywhere else, it's a top 10. It's like, if you need a guy that you want to put money on to get a top 10, John Sokup is your guy. Yeah, if there was fantasy fishing and Bassmaster Opens, yeah. he would be my pick at every event. <laughs> every so, event. Every event. Every event. <laughs> He's down, uh, they start to, well, they start today as this podcast comes yes. out on uh, Lake Hartwell. Yes. On the NPFL. So that's, uh, that's going to be an interesting one. So just FYI, I was reading through the MPFL stuff today. Um, MPFL now has this, the final two days only will be live. Oh. Yes. The first day will not. And I understand that. That's probably, you know, part of the deal for budget cuts and, you know, the, you know, everything that had to go through with MPFL. Mm -hmm. But uh, I was actually watching. Who was I watching? Was it um, Fat Cat? That's who it was. I was watching a Fat mm -hmm. Cat video. So yeah, they're doing live for two days. And I mean, I understand, I understand some of the changes, but yeah. So congratulations to him. Um, and, uh, it was an awesome event. It came down to like two, three, four pounds this week. Yeah. yeah. So it was, it was a good time on the James river. It was. So congratulations to them. Uh, just FYI. Um, if you have not been to the basscast.com right now for some crazy unknown reason, um, we, had, we uploaded a ton of content. We actually interviewed the co-angler winner uh, who, you know, this, this is pretty cool for him. I want to bring this up really cool quick. Um, but uh, this was like a big dream for this guy. I mean, you know, he been fishing his whole entire life 
and for him the chance to you know win a boatload of money and to win his first ever open event nice. and then like i said congratulations to uh kim uh mr uh kente kimura kimura however you guys want to say it i know i'm gonna dice it but uh congratulations to him on taking home the overall victory and uh you know you know it kind of sucks keith poche he really wants to get i ain't gonna say he wants to get back into the elites but he really wanted that win and unfortunately it came up a little short this time but he's a heck of an angler still had a great tournament though yeah still had a great tournament and if you guys don't know um James Neely is a co-angler. I apologize real quick. But um, I actually did the first interview, like, real, you know, interview type deal with Keith back 12 years ago, <laughs> 10 years ago, when a Bassmaster Elites came to Smith Mile Lake. So, yeah, we're going way on back now because <laughs> they ain't been there in a long time. But, yeah, so congratulations on everyone. Thank you for checking out the content. Um the basscast.com will be on Smith Mount Lake this weekend for all three days. Thought about taking this little tent over here in the corner, but I probably need to come home to eat. And uh, we got the big bass tour. That's always a fun tournament. Oh, yeah. That is so cool. <clears throat> a weigh in every hour. Yeah. Yeah. They're fun to fish, too. It's, it's probably one of the fun. It's just good time, whether you win, whether you do anything. Yeah. It's so, there's so much strategy that goes into it. And it's uh, probably one of the funnest formats a weekend angler can go fish. <clears throat> and, and, it, and that's the coolest, you know, that is, just like you said, Geek, that is one of the coolest thing about the Big Bass Tour. It is strategy. Yeah. But I mean, dang, for a... Uh, I don't know what the entry fee is. I'm just throwing out 100, 200 bucks. It's under 200, I think is what it is, yeah. or around. I think it's like 150. Now, it yeah. used to be to, to fish like both days, right? Both. I yeah. think they, they do it two days, or is it three? I Actually, the old Smith Mile Lake is three. Okay. It See. is now Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So they may do a 200 entry Yeah, fee so, I mean, that is cool that you now, for 200 bucks, one fish in yeah. one hour can net you $1,000. Yeah, and it's believe it or not it's i i hate to say easy because it's never easy but a lot of times i mean you got a good chance of at least cashing cashing some sort of check yeah you know uh when you're out there fishing so all right so good luck to everyone fishing i know uh the lake will be crazy uh yeah. it's usually about 800 anglers that fish this thing now by the way <clears throat> i'm not saying every boat's empty with one person but you can actually have, I think, up to three anglers on a boat. Wow. So, yeah, I mean, it got some different rules. But, guys, if you're not registered for that, head on over to the Big Bass Tour and get registered for this weekend. Um, by the way, we will be running a contest on Facebook. Just heads up. And, it'll be, and it's going up the same day as this podcast. I will give you one day to pick the winning weight. That's it. I ain't going to mess around with it. You get one day. Mm. And then I got a bunch of stuff over here in the left corner. I'm gonna be giving you guys. So whoever wins it, pick the one. Wait, what do you think, Geek? I'm gonna say six eleven. I'm going more than that. I'm gonna say uh, an eight. Gonna pull? Oh, you think they're gonna pull an eight? Yeah, I don't know. Well, let's go. I wanted at... to go seven. Well, that's what I was but, saying. But I'm Maybe like, I'm gonna s- go six. Of course, I don't know, man. There's like they should be on yeah, the beds. They should be. I'm gonna say seven and a half. Mm, now I'm regretting my six eleven. <laughs> because there has been a lot of eights pulled out of that lake in the springtime yeah. here in the last couple of years. You guys know Ben Hudson. He pulled two of them out. Yep. Uh, another guy that I work with, he pulled one out. So the eights are there, and I don't know. Yeah. How I mean. The tiger bass, there's a lot, you know. I would, God, I, I still think it's going to be low seven, seven, two, seven, three. Okay. So there you go. There's our pick. We're not entering. If you like to, you can, but I'm not entering. But uh, there you go. The contest will be up and you guys can go ahead and you will have uh, 
I'm going to put it up to this afternoon and you have until Friday at, no, I apologize. Tomorrow is Thursday already, ain't it? Yeah. Thank God. Cause it's my Friday. Thursday's my Friday. Yeah. Thursday's my Friday too this week. Technically, so, if you're so, you'll have, to so you'll have to. Today is Thursday. Yeah, today is Thursday. <laughs> Gosh, I'm <a> behind. <laughs> so we're going to give you some time to pick either way. So there it is. There's our picks. Um, tonight guys we have mr drew gregory on uh if you guys who aren't following the kayak stuff we're back doing a kayak um podcast again and you had a kayak or angler on your i did channel. uh he's a boater and a kayaker he boater just and got into yes just got into kayak uh, he's fishing kayak, some smaller kayak club tournaments uh fishing with gramps he's a youtuber too so yeah he's a good dude i like him a lot we've uh become quite good friends that's awesome so that podcast now is up on outdoorobsessionsradio.com you guys can head on over there and click the link and make sure you take a listen to that and as far as i know you're on about every podcast and network out there except for have you done the itunes Yes, I'm, I'm live right, on have, iTunes. Yep. That's right. He is live on iTunes. So it is across everything and iTunes. So make sure you guys head on over and take a listen. All right, guys. Like I said, we have Mr. Drew Gregory on tonight. He's going to break it all down. He won the Bass. He won his first Bassmaster Kayak Series victory on Oklahoma's Grand Lake. And we're going to be right back with Mr. Drew Gregory. All right, guys, we are back with Mr. Drew Gregory. Brother, welcome to the show. We appreciate you coming on and talking with us tonight. Uh, like I said, if you guys have not seen the post on the basscast.com, 214 of you guys have already checked it out. Uh, you won your first Bassmaster Kayak Series event, man, on Grand Lake. Yeah, pretty awesome, man. I'm excited to be here. And, uh, you know, it's it's I'm exhausted. It's a long way from <laughs> Northeast Ohio to, to Oklahoma. But uh, and then I've driven all the way back and, you know, done, done the family stuff to kind of catch up with life with the kids and the wife and all that and all these interviews and PR and, and certainly not complaining. But what I'm getting to is I'll be honest with you guys, man, I'm a little bit of a spaz and your biggest challenge tonight will, will be to keep me to 30 minutes, like you said. All right, well, <laughs> but, all right. But I think you'll be able to do it. Maybe we'll see Please. because uh, I'm, I'm maybe slowed down just a little bit by all the interviews and all that so maybe i'll be at the right speed for you guys tonight I'll be perfect. <laughs> all right well let's perfect let's go to the first question man who is drew gregory man wow that's a that's a loaded question there uh oh, you gosh. Know, i've been doing this for a while uh in yes. kayak fishing and uh i started out uh most people know me from when i was with jackson kayak i was the first employee with jackson and developed and designed a lot of the kayaks with jackson there and they were my signature series models, really cool boats, and invented that the high low seats that you see in these kayaks mm -hmm. today. That that was the, the first kayak that you ever saw that on was the Kusa from Jackson, yep. the, our very first one. So and I almost bought a Kusa, but I didn't like one thing, the scrubber holes. Okay. Wow. Well, you know you can plug them, they're scrubber plugs. You just yes, pop they it are. in, man. That's it. But Go anyway, ahead. It's a good it's a good boat. You kind of need those for a river, and yes. that's it's a river mm -hmm. boat. So anyway. A lot of people know me from from that and then i went on to to uh host a a show called hooked on wild waters on for five seasons and i also ran a tournament trail called the river bass and tournament trail which a lot of people know me from running that trail for 10 years so why am i no longer doing the show and no longer you know um running the tournament trail that's the question why am i fishing tournaments now instead of doing all that uh well basically it's because the kayak fishing tournaments have finally in the last like four or five years got big enough got you know enticing enough you got mm. hobie, ba hobie bass open series came oh, into yes. play, which uh you know i've won on that series and i've won the angler of the year in that series as well nice. um, but, but then yeah and then i was in second last year before our, our championship and then our little girl came six weeks early so uh. i had to miss that to couldn't defend the title there mm. so i've had a nice run on the hobie bass open series and you've got the Bassmaster Kayak Series and, of course, Kayak Bass Fishing, which was the original national tournament trail. Right. But these other two, you know, the Bassmaster and Hobie just sort of kind of popped up the last, you know, Bassmaster the last two, three years. Hobie's probably been around now about four or five. So that's kind of maybe 2018 when, is when I started dabbling in to all this because my sponsors were like, hey, you know, you could give us just as much value fishing these tournaments. And I'd done really well in, you know, the couple that I'd fished, the, the national championships for kayak bass fishing. They said, I think you could get some good value. You're obviously, you know, 
very talented at, at catching them. So maybe try that if you want uh, instead of the show. And I enjoy it more, to be honest with you. It's way more fun to go out there and fish <laughs> yeah. without pro- yeah. production crews around and worrying about lighting and all this stuff. Uh, and then to kind of wrap all this up, a lot of people know me now, not just from the tournaments, but with my affiliation with, with Crescent Kayaks, which maybe you can see that up there, Crescent Kayaks. But um, yeah, I'm designing the boats for them now. So oh wow, I, I got a new model coming out. Uh, I can't really talk specifics, but I can tell you right now, it's uh, very, 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 very soon. You guys will see that new kayak drop. And people have been waiting for years uh, for this thing. It's been a couple of years in the works, but trust me, it's worth the wait. And you're about to finally see it here pretty soon so i'm excited about that but yeah that's drew gregory in a nutshell but uh other than that family man love god i love others and just love sharing my passion for uh you know fishing and kayaks and rivers which i call river bassing there you go hey so this new kayak coming out man uh, i know yeah. you can't tell us much about it but the price range you know that's always a big thing for everybody yeah. in 20 you know now i mean you know is it going to be the mm-hmm. 1500 or we're looking the hobie price range no no it's that 1500 it's a paddle kayak it's in that range uh it's got scupper so i don't know if you'd want it but, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's in that 15 1600 range and it's a great great paddling boat so at crescent we stick to you know paddling you know only we're not really getting into anything like pedal drives and whatnot mm-hmm. right uh you know we add motors to them i mean people do we don't really make any brackets and mounts but a lot of folks out there third party you know companies make mounts for them and throw your motor guide on there throw your to- torpedo or whatever you got and uh you know, go to town. A lot of these tournament trails allow it. So you might as well have it. So, and I've got, you know, I carry four kayaks with me to every tournament of all different sizes and setups for everything. And then oh, I wow. make, make my decision at the tournament, which one I'm going to be in a little 10 foot hmm. ultralight paddling kayak or my solo skiff with a 109 pound thrust motor guide, you know, I mean, with 36 volt lithium pros batteries, just, I, mean, <laughs> I got, I, I got every spectrum covered. So what do you think about the introductory, you know, of the trolling motor and, you know, of that side of kayak fishing? You know, a lot of people, you know, got a little upset. I mean, you know, the whole thing about a kayak, you know, a whole thing about kayak fishing, I don't need the motor, the motor. Right. I don't need the battery. I don't need to drop an extra two, fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars if you do it right. No, I'm just saying if you right. do it right. I mean, you can go to Walmart and buy a hundred and fifty dollar trolling motor and, a, you know, a good battery. That's right. Well, I, I mean, honestly, I'm gonna, I'll tell you why I think it's really cool for the sport. And even though I didn't use a motor in this event, and matter of fact, that you know, a lot of times I try to find places where, you know, you can't even use a motor. Or it's not necessary because to me, mm-hmm. I still want that sim- simplicity. But here's why it's awesome for kayak fishing. A, when you start getting fields in that 200 and 250 and, and the kayak bass fishing national championship, we've had as much as uh, 750. Matter of fact, that this check right here is the one where I uh, got 20,000 or 20 something thousand with bonus bucks for finishing second in the kayak bass fishing national championship. Uh, cause there were 750 people when you yeah. have that many people. Okay. And you want the sport to grow. If you don't have motors, there's only so many places you can launch kayaks from, yep. you know, each lake people are now going to be <clears> on top <throat> of each other even more. So yeah. I, I like the motors because they allow us to separate even further, but I also like the motor because, it brings more money into the turn into the tournament trails, into sponsorships for anglers. It brings more, just more of the, the commerce, right. Into kayak fishing, which is nice. And it, not just the motors, it brings the batteries into play more. Oh yeah. It brings a lot of other stuff into play, which is good for everybody that trickles down to the anglers. What I also love about the fact that motors are involved is the fact that the Hobie Bass open series is chosen not to allow motors. And I think that's cool because it, it still gives us that option to not they allow it in pre-fishing so it's still a useful tool but not in a tournament so and then on top of all that i just like the fact that we have it as an option but i don't ever lose lose sight of the fact that you don't have to use it and it's not a disadvantage to not use it i mean i just won this tournament where i bet you everybody in the tournament most of them 95 percent were all had motors <clears throat> most likely, or, or at least pedal drive right. kayaks. And I had a little 10 foot paddle kayak and uh, went to work and, and just, you know, got it done. There's still places for that because the bigger they get, the bigger these little kayaks get, they're mini boats. Like you said, basically. they are mini boats. They are. So that eliminate some people just, or, well, all these people that have these mini boats, they have to launch from boat ramps. They can't launch at little 
obscure places, in, you know, off the side of the road or bridges and place, you know, other public places that you can launch. Mm -hmm. They can't. So that leaves those kind of places open for me. Of course, now I'm on this podcast. I've won a couple of tournaments doing that. I'm sure it's, it's becoming increasingly popular. So I'm sort of promoting the, <laughs> the way that I <laughs> hurt myself here a little bit, but uh, you know, do you ever think, you know, you, you being in the business side of it as well, you know, Torquedo, I see the sign behind you, you know, it's quite expensive the torpedo it is that do was we, from a sponsorship i think kbf or somebody i don't know yeah that. do we ever yeah, see that yeah. do we ever see that price do you ever think we might see that price coming down or someone else coming into the market i mean because i use it, motor it, guides and they're a little bit more price uh friendly i think that that torpedo and and they give you the anchor ability too, the spot lock the mm -hmm. anchor uh which i love and i love the bow mount because you can i can stand yes. up and use that lanyard remote or i can use a, a on my solo skiff the foot foot control remote which is nice uh, and you just can't stand up and do that with the Torquedo or Newport vessels. But to answer your question on that Torquedo, Newport vessels is sort of, uh, I mean, it's just basically a knockoff of the Torquedo. And it's a uh, less expensive product. I don't know quite the price, but I know um, it's cheaper. There you go. Mm. That's awesome. Yeah, because, I mean, like I said, you know, it was pretty cool. You were talking about the Hobie Open Series. And I was actually watching, they did a live the other night. Uh, and they were talking about their next event and their events are selling out fast. Oh yeah. I mean, we're talking about within hours, oh, their yeah. event sells Min out minutes. I mean, yes, six, it's, it yeah, it's six minutes to fill out the Susquehanna. I actually was pre-fishing for this tournament on uh, grand Lake on Friday when it opened at noon Eastern time. And I was, <laughs> I was at a spot up, up kind of one of the rivers on grand Lake. And I had to literally get out of my kayak, go on the, the bank to this bluff, hike up the bluff, with 15 minutes till, you know, 11 o'clock central time and just sit there and wait and just hope I had enough signal. I had, you know, fortunately I was able to get two bars at the top of that bluff. <laughs> I had no signal in the river and just sit there right when it hit, you know, you know, 11 o'clock my time, I'm just register. And then I was, I mean, already like 60, I registered in a minute and I was already 60 or 70th registered. Oh, it. Cow. So, so that, and, tells, that tells all you guys out there how, you know, how big this whole entire thing has gotten. And, I like, you know, I'll be honest, I fish out of Wilderness Systems Ride 115. Uh, I paddle. I have, I do have a battery that's supposed to go in my kayak eventually. Eventually is the word. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean, I'm still about the paddling. And, uh, you know, I think Kobe has been doing so well with that because, you know, that was the whole thing about, and I guess that's what I was getting to. That's the whole thing about the kayak series. You know, you ain't got to buy a $1,500 kayak. Right. But it's, but you really want something you want the seat mm -hmm. that, you know, that 12 position backrest seat that got all lumbar in it. <clears throat> and you, you know, you want that comfortability that you only have to take maybe, okay, I'm almost 49. I have to take about three breaks in mine, <laughs> but uh, <clears throat> so, I mean, you all have to take a couple of breaks and you're not hurting when you get out of the daggone thing. Cause you can't yeah. run around like you can in a bass boat. That's right. Yeah. I'm a big guy, so I got to stand up and get the blood flowing to the booty again. You know, <laughs> you do, man. I'm starting yeah. to get at that age too, where I need to take a little break from sitting down so long. It, it does, it does hurt. You got to get out, stretch the legs, and, and just sort of refresh a little bit. But yeah. fortunately, I was able to do it in this tournament uh, at a moment where I I milked my little pocket, my spawning pocket I'd found, and I'd, I'd made so many laps through there. I said, you know what, these fish need a break. Anyway, if I'm going to catch any more out of it, so this is a perfect time to get up, get a little food, there you stretch go. the legs. And man, that felt good. It felt good knowing I already had a, a nice, nice bag there on the, on the phone. So, so guys, for $1,500, a milk crate and a rod holder. Now, the rod holders, I would buy those. I didn't buy, I didn't cut my tube in, but I went to Target and bought a milk crate. I mean, I want to be honest. I mean, mm -hmm. and a few rods. Hey, you can fish a kayak tournament. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, dude, you could do it. I have a $200 Walmart kayak. I mean, this, this Crescent ultralight I was fishing out of was, uh, it's under a thousand dollars. It's around, you know, eight, nine hundred bucks made in the USA. Good, good quality product. Um, you know, so, and then the, we've got other models that are just around a thousand, a little bit, a little bit over a thousand. It's not expensive at all, really, right. uh, considering the, the prices of, you know, bass boats and other, mm. other boats these days. So yes. What is it about $60,000 for a Ranger right now? <laughs> Well, you better keep more. going, yeah, buddy. probably more. Yeah, you better yeah. keep going. And that's the base model. So a if you Ranger. want, uh, if you want everything loaded, I've I've heard they're like seventy-five to eighty thousand. Now, right if now. you're talking about a, yeah. a legitimate twenty to twenty-one foot Ranger, a base model, 
a base model is probably going to cost you 72 to 75 Good God. probably maybe even 76 78 Oh man, I'd be in a, an express or something like that aluminum rig if I was fishing uh, any of the open. Hey, they ain't no NPFL. cheaper. They ain't no cheaper. Thirty five thousand yeah. dollars yeah. for the express boat. Yeah. Sixty. See, yeah. yeah, but uh, we're talking about like you now. Yeah, we're they're talking, talking about, about the Mag Daddy. Yeah, we're talking about tournament rig. Yeah, but I would want an eighteen. I would want the smallest they would allow me, and everyone else <laughs> is going to want the biggest. So mine would be thirty five, forty thousand, and yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd fight and claw to get it and push pull to get it in some places that maybe those other guys aren't aren't thinking about because they're all just wanting to you know, live scope and pan optics and, and that's all good. Well, I've got, I've got live scope too, man. I'm you know connected with the bass tank. I see you're out there. Those guys are great. And, uh, oh yes. You yeah. know, er everything I have and everything we use and my sponsors know that I don't use every product every time, just like, just like the bass. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's like they use their power poles every time to win, <clears throat> but when they need them, <clears throat> they're there, they yep. work. Then, then it is the difference in that one fish or, or the winning the tournament or not. So to me, it's it's pretty cool having a product like the Garmin, uh, you know that, that I got from the Bass Tank, and oh, that yeah. tool is such it's so important when you need it. You know, it just happened to be this time in this tournament. I didn't really need anything but my instincts and that little ten foot kayak, and 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 just that was it. All right, so the Bass Kayak Series for anybody who does not know, you know, we're teaching as well as people have been doing the kayak thing for a little while. Um, how does that go? I mean, do you get a day of practice? You get two days of practice. Is there any off limits? How does the beginning of this whole thing start? Sure. And then we'll take a dive yeah. into your 91 and a half inches. There well, even, go. even go even farther back. How do you actually get involved with it? What do you have to do? What's the requirements? Do you have to qualify right. for the series? What do you okay. actually have to do? No, good, good question. Um, and this is great. We're teaching people here. So Bassmaster is pretty easy. Uh, I mean, they're all easy, really. But if you go on Bassmaster.com, you can click on tournaments and click on kayak. Everything will be listed there. College, high school, opens. It'll all be there. Elites. You just click on kayak and you'll see the information, the info sheets for each tournament. You can click on uh, register to register for them. Uh, the rules are there so you can kind of read over the rules. And, you know, getting into the rules, like you said, there is this year, this the Bassmaster Kayak Series is the first to ever enforce an off limits period, which I love. Oh. I mean, love it. And I'll explain why I love it, but, but they're off limits right now. It's, it's just kind of a small off limits, but it still kind of accomplishes uh, a goal. But what it is, it's, it's the Saturday before the tournament Saturday, if that makes sense, a week before mm -hmm. the, the lake goes off limits until Tuesday until Wednesday. Sorry. So Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, it's off limits. So it's hard for someone to, camp there for two weeks because who wants to go drive somewhere that might be who knows how far five ten fifteen hours away from home yeah and have to kill four days with sitting there twiddling their thumbs well so basically everyone kind of shows up on most people i'm sure show up and get all two and a half days of their practice which is wednesday thursday and friday until 2 p.m uh, but i show up on you know usually like tuesday at some point and kind of get situated into my uh, Airbnb and, and unloaded and organized and maybe even drive around a little bit and kind of scout some spots in the lake. But uh, that's how the off limits period works for Bassmaster. And I like that a lot. Uh, so, and then let's see, I get in uh, fish, you know, and I, if you want, I can go over real quick how I pre fish. I mean, how I pre fish the oh, yeah. tournament. Yeah, go for it, it. Yeah. So I'm a little different than, than some people. Um, now, in the bass boat world, a lot of guys are graphers. They'll go and just graph. Uh, I, do that in a different way i because they want to find what's the water temperature in this cove what does it look like over here they run different places and then they graph and graph and they all they're doing is gathering information on the fishery mm -hmm. as a whole that's all they're doing they're looking for birds on the bank or in, out in the middle whatever they're looking for bait fish on the graph they're just just getting information temperature current clarity everything i do the same similar thing but in my <laughs> toyota tacoma I'm in my, my truck. I'm driving around. I got a little kitchen digital thermometer. I should have brought it to show you guys. It's just, I stick it in the water. I check out some places. I put my little ultralight 10 foot crescent kayak in the back, but my goal is kind of not really that first day to not even put it in because mm -hmm. if you put it in, you end up fishing and you fish yeah. than you expect and you never, never really want to get out. Right. And if you do that, you don't cover the whole lake and as much of the lake as you probably need to, to really, then take all of my experience and everything that got up here to make a good decision on the night before the tournament on where to go and on tournament day, how to fish the moment effectively 
with a game plan. So I kind of do that drive around and, and check the whole lay the land out. I want to see, I like fishing a lot of rivers and creeks with people know me as, you know, guy that river basses, even though mm -hmm. pretty cool. I think that I, I won this one on the lake, not in a river or Creek, but uh, I like to drive and check all those places out. Any little spots that maybe my kayak can access that other bigger kayaks can't. And then uh, I look at the vegetation, the structure, is there wood, is there lily pads, eel grass, whatever I can see, just kind of, cause it might be in one part of the lake that you can see from the shore, you know, just hopping out of, of my truck and not in, in others. And you can kind of get, kind of get a feel for it that way, you know, um, rock, whatever there is in the habitat. And then it kind of helps me figure out where do I want to go um, before, uh, maybe even before we started recording, you were talking about you're a muddy water guy. Yeah. I prefer to find some stain as well and fish moving baits, uh, chatter baits, spinner baits, buzz baits, swim baits, stuff like that. So now that I've seen the whole lake, I can finally make an accurate decision. Where is the best place to fish that way? So on the second day of pre-fishing, I go to, you know, spot A, you know, and then hopefully hit at least three or four of them that day. You don't, and I try to discipline myself to get out of the water and don't spend too much time there. It's easy if I catch a big fish because then I can get out and just, I can quit. Oh, hey. Right, right. <laughs> I want to beat them up. A lot of times, you know, I got to give myself a limit because if you're not catching them after so long, you just need to pull the plug and move. Uh, so basically that's what I do. And then on the last two days of pre-fishing, I cover as much of that water as I can. And then, then of course, Friday night, you're sitting there looking at the map, Google, Google Earth Pro and mm -hmm. you're looking, you're like, well, you know, I got all my pins marked, that, all my waypoints that I'd previously already found on the map before I got there, which, you know, hopefully people following along know to at least do that. Go to get, oh, get, yes. get Google Earth Pro, drop your waypoints. That's how I'm going to all these places. So then I kind of look and say, all right, man, like, this is where I feel like I can get the biggest bite, or this is where I feel like other people may have found this. So maybe I should go there first because it's probably going to get hit at some point during the day. Mm -hmm. And then I usually have a game plan on, uh, I give myself an out, you know, my brother, I'll never forget this. He used to drive a big semi truck and he said, you know, they always teach you to every second. And this is for anybody driving. If something were to happen, if, you know, if everything were to hit the fan, where are you going to go? Right. And that's kind of what I always have a game plan. Like I got a plan a, I hope I'm there all day long. I hope I never have to pull the kayak out of the, the river or Lake or Creek and move to plan B. But if I do, I want to have that plan in place. And so that's what I have for this tournament. I had three spots and uh, I went to the first one and, and never, <laughs> never pulled back out. So it's just, it's just different every tournament. I've, I've moved as many times as five or six up in La Crosse, Wisconsin. And uh, today or today, this, this tournament just didn't have to. So on Grand Lake, man, what was, what was particular about the spot you found? It was really cool because it's a, it was a spawning pocket uh, off a of main lake uh, cove. And then there's a spawning <laughs> pocket, right? Which is like, no surprise, right? No the surprise. water's about 60 degrees in there yes. and high 50, 60 degrees, and uh, they're getting ready to do their thing. But there's a couple of unique things about it. So if you guys in your head, if you're listening to this on a podcast, you can kind of visualize. But the spawning pocket, the north bank, right? There's a north bank. There's a, a west bank, an east bank. The north bank had a little bit higher uh, clay, rocky, you know, pebbly, how that that substrate is over there uh mm. bank to it so you gotta imagine you know wind and cold wind especially is coming from the northwest shooting down and that higher bank had and, and had some some trees on it nothing no real big trees but it was just a right. higher bank so the bank is the hardest wind break there is right it's actually just ground so the water on the the you know it's a south facing bank was is calmer than the rest of the lake so calm water warms up faster than water with with waves and ripples mm -hmm. so the sun here's the other just beauty of this whole thing the sun sets in this more the southern part of the hemisphere right now and so when it starts going up and over it's getting sunlight literally all day long there is no if you ever you guys you know if you're in virginia like you said okay yeah. you know ski resorts there's always that one side of the mountain that stays shaded all right there's always the one side that gets pretty much sun the whole day it's yeah. the way it works when we're this far you know north in the northern hemisphere so it just worked out man with that that bank had all this heat going on now the other beauty is the lake rose this i found the spot uh on wednesday the first day pre-fishing it may have even been the first place i went caught four fish there and left and they were 16 17 inch range fish Ooh. solid fish not like giants but yeah that's enough good ones to say, all right, I got to quit fishing, even though it's Wednesday. I, I mean, you still don't want to burn them all up. Yep. 
even on Wednesday. That was enough to prove what was there. So, you know, I decided to um, leave him alone. And then uh, fortunately on Saturday, Saturday, the water had risen in the lake. There's a bunch of rain. And I'm also a data guy. I'm following the lake level every day. I'm following the river gauges because I know the river gauges equate to what the lake gauge is going to do, right? And a bunch of rain hit the Elk River, high, high flooding real quick, uh, thunderstorms and some tornadoes were going on in the area. So I knew it was going to come up. I didn't realize how much. And it just allowed that pocket to get a little bit more water in it, a little deeper. And here's the key. It allowed the lake to hit full pool. And these oh. fish, they know, they memorize oh, yeah. what full pool is. They know. Yep. So, and they also, a lot of fish wait to spawn until it gets to full pool, yeah. especially lakes that hit full pool in, in uh, mid-April, late April, May. They'll, a, a group of them will wait because they there's a spot they want to do it on that's dry. You know what I mean? And they kind of are like salmon some bass i know they are they go back to the same areas to spawn and so the water coming up uh, allowed more fish to get in there but what was unique was on the pre-fishing i was catching them on spinner baits and they weren't right on the bank or anything they were and again remember the water's like almost a yeah. foot lower so you don't have i mean there's hardly any little buck brush and structure and tree trunks you know roots and stuff in this little pocket but there's some but on Wednesday, they weren't really touching the water because the lake hadn't come up another almost right. foot. So they and plus it's just a little earlier, I think they just were still in pre-spawn and they were just train wrecking this this sling blade spinner bait right here. They were just train wrecking it. Uh, and I have some modifications I make with it, put a chartreuse blade on it when that muddy water, I put a second skirt on it to yeah. make it bulkier and it slows it down even more. This is this is a half ounce. Uh I actually bend mine out right here a little bit. They bend this, you probably can't see it, but I bend it. No, we can see it. I get the blades closer to the hook. That's the, that's the yeah. goal. And I do that a lot because I'm a river guy. And in the river with current, it, it floats it up too, too high. You want to squeeze it tight, bring it compact. And this is a, a Z-Man minnows with a chartreuse tail. But anyway, uh, they were train wrecking this thing. I mean, like pre-spawn, like how fish hit it when they're just feeding. And oh, yeah. there was birds everywhere. They were, they were you know, uh, eat, uh, whatever, all the different uh, heron and and the, all, all the fish eating birds they're standing on the bank and they're in chatter flipping out and they, they were eating so a lot of bait was in there but then on tournament day i roll in there and i was super nervous that you know other bass boats or other kayakers might have found it because it's a very small pocket it just is it wasn't big and then um and in this in this little cove in this pocket it's actually unique this little area gets a little bit deeper than the rest of the water around it which is like a a foot of just kind of flat gravelly pebbly nothing but this one little area in this pocket just gets a little bit deeper like two and a half three feet and so i go in there in tournament day and the spot i was catching pre-fishing which is what you always imagine the night before in your head that's where it's going to go down like they were there i caught two or three right mm. there they were train wrecking the spinnerbait i throw this in there and nothing i mean nothing wow and i'm like oh lord like this is not good man that they're not here i'm gonna have to move and then I fished around a little bit. And then at one point, uh, bringing this in, uh, kind of slowly, slow rolling it, bringing it in. And one slurps it in as I'm lifting it out of the water. I mean, <laughs> six six to eight inches of line, that's all I had. That, I mean, literally, I'm done with the cast. And just lift the fish right up. I just reacted, pulled it up, <laughs> set it in my kayak. Yeah. And it had such a little bit of line. It just thrashed, broke the line. I mean, 30-pound, you know, SX1. This isn't like some you know, 10 pound oh, wow. line, it thrashed yeah. it, broke it because it was so green. It was like a 17 inch fish. So uh, 16 and three quarters. So, it, you know, almost a three pound fish probably. And it, it went nuts and broke the line, but it was in the boat, but it, it told me something. I said, man, that was a really weird sluggish. I got, I just saw it, you know, I got it on my GoPro and I've rewatched it. It's just such a cool, just slowly slurp. And uh, so then my next fish, I worked my way around in some of the hot spots of pre-fishing I caught them, didn't catch them. Uh, work my way around and another fish does the exact same thing this time like five six feet of line out not much and i see it just slowly kind of i'm like man they are just not eating the same way so i decided to um let the, the spot rest and work out of there a little bit i caught a couple more i had four fish and then um one point decided to you know i just need to mix it up and figure out where i know they had to be there they had they had to still be in the area but where did they go right mm -hmm. so i switched to a, a jig i picked up a jig rod um and then it's the, the z-man cross size jig and uh you guys can see that there probably yes but um i picked this sucker up a three eighths ounce and i put this the pro crawls on the back which is a big thick you know pretty good size because the, the water's murky you want a big presentation a lot of water displacement yep let them feel it 
Uh, and then I picked that jig up and there was a tree, you know, you've seen these trees where they're like willow trees, but they got lots of branches coming off, lots of kind of trunks coming off right. in the water and a beaver kind of chopped down all of them right near the water line. So you couldn't fish it effectively with a, a spinnerbait or a chatterbait, which I love to do. So I just picked this up and uh, I had it rigged up on like a seven foot four heavy action, um, 13 fishing rod with uh, about 17 pound sunline sniper and uh, fluorocarbon. So then I just threw it in there and uh, in that tree, I wanted to just work that tree. It just looked like such a unique tree. I was like, there's gotta be, if there's gonna be one that's not in my real primary area and it's just outside of it, it's gotta be one here. I flipped it in and then thump and it starts just swimming off. And I laid into an 18 and an 18 and a quarter, real fat, nice, you know, nice. Four, pound, four pound fish. And uh, I said, wow, okay, there's something to this. So then I went back into my primary zone after letting it rest with a different bait, with the jig and then uh i got i lost a, a three pound fish i skipped it underneath some buck brush um uh, because the water had risen enough where even though the roots of this in the trunks if you will this buck brush was only in about eight to ten inches of water you know i skipped underneath there and this fish picked it up and took it off i set the hook another three pound 17 18 inch class fish boat flipped her right in now this is a funny story she spits the jig right, oh wow right when she flops in the boat so now she's as green as can be man and i cover up on this thing like a <laughs> loose like a loose fumble you know i'm like all over trying to like cover up and she somehow slithers she just had so much energy and again i'm not in a hobie a super wide hobie no, yeah. kayak where i mean this is a teeny little kayak here and she slithers her way out and i'm tell you i've rarely ever had a fish flop or get away and she just pops right out of the kayak onto the on the other side and my one the other side of the kayak is the bank side i'm pretty much on the bank and so for some reason she didn't know where she was she went under the kayak up onto the bank over here and was thrashing on the bank for a second and, and then and i was trying to like get her you know try to get over <laughs> there and uh you know you can't get out of your kayak unfortunately but uh, i had yeah. no i had no time to get out anyway but she just went back in the water and got away but it told me hey you know there's there's big fish still here they're hitting the jig really good now I'm going to work this real hard with the jig. And if it wasn't 10 minutes later, I caught an 18 and a quarter on the jig. Oh, wow. And, and then now I've got, you know, uh, those two first ones that slow, slowly bit the spinner bait that were 16 and three quarters. I got the 18 and a quarter that I caught uh, on that jig. And now I've got this 18 and a quarter that I caught on a jig. So I got four really good fish. And I know that I need 90 inches to win this tournament. That was my goal because I'd looked at the weights and the weight tournaments, 20 to 23 pounds that were winning. Mm -hmm. uh and that was with 300 boat fields so i mean come on this is we don't have 300 boats so if i can get to 90 inches which uh 95 inches is is about 20 pounds but i i thought 90 inches is what i needed because in pre-fishing i saw stocky and fat they were they're actually short and stocky so i realized mm -hmm. on grand lake and pre-spawn these fish 20 pounds is actually 90 inches not 95 so i knew so anyway i knew i was getting if i had one more good bite i get I'd be getting close to 90. So um, I kept moving and, and down the bank with that jig. And the key is to kind of pitch real slow and, and, and not, I mean, just kind of make a slow presentation, 10, 15, 20 feet. Not what I'm known for is making long casts parallel to the yeah, bank. Right. That I'm parallel with my kayak because a bass boat couldn't get as shallow as I could get in that kayak. And they were just in a foot of water right on the bank, right in that, that steeper wow. bank, the, the south facing bank I was telling you about that had all the wind protection. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They were there. They were right underneath those roots, kind of like you, you would think somebody noodling catfish underneath some roots. And these aren't big trees and aren't yeah. big roots, but you could see them swirl and they came out there. And I think they were spawning right there and, and, and they were definitely getting their beds ready because any males I would catch would have tattered fins. But they, I, I, really, I really believe these fish, it's weird, but they spawn a little bit in the undercuts, which you would mm -hmm. think, well, why is that? But the sun's still coming in at that angle from yeah. the south where there is no shade from the undercut, even though it's an undercut. It's still getting great sunlight, and they spawn super shallow over there because they need that sunlight penetration. So I wasn't mm -hmm. afraid. Once I realized how shallow that first, that, that fish that, that got off, like I said, eight inches of water, 10 inches maybe. And then I said, man, there's no telling how shallow these fish can get here. And that's when I went real shallow, parallel, put my boat on the bank, made short flips because in that, especially in that hot zone. And I think maybe Otto DeFoe said this in the last MLF tournament I watched, uh, the heavy hitters, he actually ended up winning it. Yeah. But he said, you'd be shocked at how little I've moved today compared to what he normally does to catch. He's like, so many fish are just in this area. And as the water rose, more fish kind of kept moving in, uh, you know, from Wednesday to Saturday, more fish were there. And I realized, 
and the short pitches were super critical because if you make that long cast, like, like I said, I'm known for covering a lot of water, a lot of bank parallel in those banks and that structure where the, it's the high percentage areas, you know, we all know yeah. that if you did that, you catch a fish and you're going to be fighting it through all the other beds and all the other fish. Wow. So you, so to really milk Spooking this them. little teeny area that I would call just a couple acres, a little pocket. Exactly. You would spook them. So I had to go real slow, methodically pick it apart. You feel that thump, hammer them hard as you can get them in the boat and move on. And then uh, at one point, man, I just, I did a, another little trick to get to milk it even more. I let it rest again for a little while came back um and fish it from the other direction kind of around that mm -hmm. pocket yeah. which allowed me to do backhanded i'm a left-handed fisherman so i actually prefer to fish where the banks on my right side so i can skip cast stuff underneath trees but going back the other direction now i'm, I'm backhand flipping it's a little softer presentation it's you know obviously i'm not casting very far so a little backhand flip is great but it allowed me to get some angles into some of those trees and different roots and things that i could not get from the other right. way Right. And, uh, I caught a, a 20 and a quarter, which my big fish and got rid of that, that 15 incher. I had a smaller one. And then now I had like, you know, almost 90 ended up catching another 17, another 17 and a quarter uh, or 17 and three quarters of the very end to get up to 91 and a half. And that's sort of uh that's the deal. That's how it all went down, man. It was crazy. All right. Like I said, guys, 91 and a half inches, what you finished with taking home $3,400. And you won the event with nine inches, eight inches. I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Over okay. uh, Daniel Mefe, Mefe, Mefe. I think you might might have got that right. Yeah. Hey, uh, but close yeah, to it. I was <laughs> nervous. M A F F E I. I think it's Mefe. Mefe. All right. I'm not even going to try it. Yeah, I buy it. <laughs> yeah. But uh, no, super nice guy. Uh, same with the third place. I think it was Mark Pentagraph. He's the champion. Uh the championship winner from two years ago. So yes. Uh, possum, possum kingdom Lake. I got fourth there, but he, he won the whole thing and he's good champ. So a lot of good sticks are in this tournament. Didn't have the biggest turnout turn turnout ever, but uh, Easter weekend probably had a lot to do with that. And, it did. Uh, uh, obviously and that's, you know, it is what it is, but there's a lot of good sticks and it's, it's still a Bassmaster, you know, trophy. Yeah. yeah. And it oh, comes yeah. with all that media attention and exposure. It's a lot more valuable than $3,400. I promise you that. Way more valuable with what's happening after you win that than than the 3,400 itself. But uh, it was a pretty, pretty fun event for sure. They do a great job putting them on. John Stewart and the crew and Dwayne Wally, who runs Tourney X, everybody yes. out there do a great job. All right, so what does so what does this victory get you? Do you get to fish the Bassmaster Classic? Is that what it is? Or how does this all go? I wish, man. That'd be cool. <laughs> uh, I've been trying to tell them that'd be cool if they could. If the, each each, the, each winner yeah. gets to qualify yeah. for the classic, and then they all show up uh, in Tennessee yeah. next year and fish the river. There you go. That'd be cool. What what it does qualify me for actually the top ten percent of every Bassmaster Kayak Series tournament qualifies for the championship, and the championship is okay. always held yeah. in conjunction with the classic. So next year it will be in Tennessee, since the guys are um, you know in Knoxville. But what it also that's what I, I meant to say championship yeah. so the classic. Yeah, yeah, but. Yeah. Right, right, and but. It, I'd already qualified for that championship from the first Bassmaster uh, event that I fished, which was the Harris chain. I got okay. seventh place there and I, nice. I was fortunate to be the last man in. I was a top 10% finish <clears throat> there. So I, I already had kind of ticked that box off, but um, what I'm really doing and what i you know, my goal is, and a, and a lot of folks that fish this series and all the series, Hobie and KBF, they're all kind of shooting for the angler of the year title. Right. Yes. Uh, and Bassmaster, they take your best, four finishes out of the five events now you don't have to fish all five as a matter of fact i missed lake fork because my little daughter was born and she was right. a couple couple months mm -hmm. old and i want to you know stay here and not not leave my wife alone with a, a four-year-old and a uh you know two month old <laughs> I, and three, yeah. three dogs so i made that uh smart business decision there and then i was <laughs> yeah. okay I'm gonna, I'm gonna fish all four of the next uh bass masters and uh make a run for this aoi because even if i don't win the aoi or i'm not in contention they go by the aoi standings to qualify for the championship after they take you know the top 10 percent from each of those uh events yeah you can have a good finish and not be in the top 10 percent. you could be 11 or 15 percent. right you know you do that over and over and you're going to be in the top whatever i don't know how many people they still take maybe another 50 or 100 mm -hmm. to qualify for the championship through the aoi points so it was very important to fish enough but now that i got seventh in the first one and first in this one it's obvious you know so you double qualify i did double qualify which helped maybe somebody get in at grand lake that wouldn't have got in so 
Yes. That's how it always feels good. You get to help somebody else make it to the championship. That That's way. what helped a lot of Bassmaster lead anglers get back into Bassmaster this past year. And there was a lot of, yeah. a lot of that stuff happened oh, this yes. past year. Scott, so Scott Martin was saying some, some prayers. I know. And he, yes. they were, they were answered. Go. They were answered. But um, oh, one little thing I was going to tell you guys, I forgot to mention on the jig, just, just a little bit of juice on for anyone who throws Z-Man uh, baits. The Elastec is, uh, is buoyant. So it floats. Mm-hmm. So this is a thick chunk of mass. This uh, TRD cross. Uh, well, it's not TRD. It's the Pro Cross. Sorry, TRD Cross is the smaller one. But here's what's crazy. This is a. Uh, I was throwing a, a three eighths ounce jig, but you don't want to really throw a three eighths or, or a half ounce or something like that when you're fishing a foot, foot and a half of water. You don't. I say it's it. pretty heavy. It's heavy. So, but what the beauty is, uh, we don't make a quarter ounce in the uh, the flipping jig. This this cross size flipping jig. They make it in the in the the power finesse flipping jig. Uh, but not in this one. I wanted the bigger bulk. So what happens is when you put a big chunk of elastic that's buoyant like that, it makes this thing fish like a quarter ounce. It takes it down a, a whole ha- a whole quarter. Every big chunk you put on there with your, your chatterbait trailer, so a five-inch diesel minnow or a six-inch swimmers is going to make it a fish a quarter ounce lighter. Uh, likewise, if you put just a minnows, like a small minnows, like it was on a spinnerbait or a straight tail, like a Streaks 3.75 or a Streaks, you know, they're, they're thinner stuff. Uh, razor chat whatever like some of the thinner stuff that d- does not have a boot tail will make it fall faster so right. you can always adjust your bait with the z-man elastic plastic the way you want it to retrieve which the fall is super critical for a jig you want it that slow natural mm-hmm. fall not just mm-hmm. so that was a key and, and i just had to mention that uh it's a little bit of extra juice because the, the beauty is on a bait caster you want heavy bait but i got yeah. the heavy bait and i get the presentation of a quarter ounce actually if you think about it, this is it throws heavier than a three eighths because this is still weight, even though it floats, it's weight. It's throwing like a half ounce, probably, but the presentation is like a quarter ounce, which is just genius that it floats like that. And you can keep adjusting and, and working things like that. So, a little extra tip for those out there looking to find there you guys go. Yep. All right, Drew, I've got one final question. Uh, geek, I mean, he's asked, he's answered about everything I can think of. I know that's uh, I was like, well, I don't have to. It's like, he's, 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 he's <laughs> my job's manu- easy. I can go home and drink beer. All right. <laughs> he has manually <laughs> recorded this thing, so it's in his yeah. brain. That's right. Um, my question we always ask this question to everybody what was your biggest takeaway from this event what was something that you learned or you know or something that you learned that you don't want to ever do again yeah that's a good one my, i think my biggest takeaway was just to just how important it is to to i mean really rely on your intuition and experience i mean i've done this a lot in tournaments and i don't know why i think everyone's still nervous to go into a tournament without a real oh, yeah. firm game plan they just want to know they got a, a waypoint with a school of 30 fish. They're just going to bite right away, but, <laughs> yeah. but not to be concerned and just, just trust that, man, dude, you've done this long enough, follow your instincts because you've gathered enough data pre-fishing that you yes. just got to believe in yourself during the tournament because you gather that data, you're going to make the best decision to at least give you the highest percentage odds to be successful. It doesn't obviously always work out, but you just to trust it because dude, they moved from pre-fish and even though they were still in that area mm-hmm. they weren't biting the same way and i was very nervous and i just i just need to trust that that, that fish in, in a four-day span or even a day one or two day span they will just change on you man they will move past not stay stick around all the time the way we want them to and no just, just know that you can as long as you're kind of in that zone just trust your instincts man your experience and just fish the moment uh, it's, it's the best phrase that's obviously commonly used but that's, that's all you can do in tournament day. Not, not stress too much if it's not, you know, happen right away. Cause they're still there. They didn't swim five miles away or anything. No. All right. What's, what's, uh, you got a question? Keith? No, man, he's covered everything. I mean, he's covered everything. What's next <laughs> Drew? What's next for you, brother? Where are you going next? Oh man. Well, next for me is actually, uh, still in the Bassmaster series, uh, mm-hmm. Smith, Lewis Smith Lake in Alabama. And that'll be the third, you know, when I fish. So I'm excited excited about that and then after that i, I kind of start getting back into some of the other series kayak bass fishing and hobie i'll be a, um, at hobie on the susquehanna river i'll be at hobie on uh lake winnipesaukee the northeast i'll be uh wolf and fox river lake dardanelle and hobie I'll, I'll fish all the rest of those and then lake champlain with kayak bass fishing and maybe lake erie lake st Clair tournament as well so yeah that's kind of what's in what's uh right, on Drew. deck here where can they follow you, man? Where can they find you if they want to follow you along on this journey in 20, 
22. Yeah, you guys can follow along. I mean, my social stuff's pretty easy. Um, it's just Drew Gregory Fishing pretty much everywhere, YouTube and Instagram and my Facebook page if you guys want to follow along. I actually got a podcast called the River Bassin Podcast. I only do it like once a month go live once a month and do it mm. uh, but i'm we trying got to throw- a, we got a home for that if you want to yeah. drop it i can tell you that right now there you go nice well i mean that you guys check it out it's pretty cool uh we talk you know about river fishing mostly obviously uh that's what, that's what i'm known for so go you guys go uh, subscribe to that if you're interested in that stuff and and that's pretty much it i mean just just follow me there and just big thanks to you know, Bassmaster for, put, for putting on a great event and all my sponsors you know you guys will if you follow me you'll kind of see who they are and whatever but definitely want to give a shout out to everybody uh, they know who they are and they definitely uh help me be successful in the water couldn't do it without them all right guys you hear it right here drew gregory like i said make sure you are following him in 2022 brother man we appreciate you coming on thank you for talking to us and uh, guys we're gonna take a quick break and we're gonna be right back all right guys man what an awesome show um man what an awesome tournament and uh uh, it's you never know what to say i mean we've been sitting here talking for like the last after kind of, i guess you can kind of say after the party after the show show party after, yeah there you go after show parties and conversations yeah, I, actually, I, I actually closed my computer because i was like all right what the heck because he's like I, you're I, like shut up mass geek you never talked through the whole show and now you start to, i didn't have to talk he just let it rip man that's he did that's man what we you know like. gosh Congratulations to Drew Gregory. Like I said, again, Congrats. you know, um, this dude, I mean, it's pretty cool when you guys heard at the beginning of the show, how his, and it's, that's another show in itself, but how his sponsor said, we think we will stick with you. We will still sponsor you. We'll still back you, pay you, whatever they're doing. Mm-hmm. If you give up YouTube, if you give up TV, if you give yeah. up all stuff and just go fishing. And that's, you know, and especially, that's you know, very unusual in today's world. Yes. Because everybody is about the views, the clicks, yep. the hits. I mean, even us, I ain't gonna lie. We all want to yep. grow and that's, you yep. know, it pays the bills and, you know, hopefully one day gets us all of a, out of a nine to five and yep. where I can wake up and seven 30 in the morning and I can start, start posting content and recording podcasts and, dropping podcasts and bringing more podcasts and you know that's the ultimate goal behind all of it so i yep. mean congratulations I get up at 3 30 and 4 o'clock in the morning and drive to a lake and fish all day <laughs> there you go so congratulations to him on his success um another young man mm-hmm. and uh good luck to him and uh, we appreciate him coming on uh it's our second podcast show um and of this year and you guys all know we had uh, Mr. Largan, you know, um, Justin Largan. There you go. Yep. And Justin came out and fished uh, the Bass Cast Tournament Series with us. So oh, that was did he come cool. out? I've been yeah, he came to out. And, uh, he, he said actually, he was going to. <clears throat> and he won it. Oh, wow. He won Smith Mountain Lake. Now, I haven't looked on Leesville, the results from that. But, yeah, he, he won uh, Smith Mountain Lake. So congratulations to him. And that's right. He didn't come out to Smith Mount Lake because he probably fished this last Bassmaster event. Yep. So we've had both bass, you know, tourney winners on Bass Cash Radio. And we appreciate them coming on and talking with us. So that's it for me, guys. Um, we hope you all have a great week, a great weekend. Um, it's supposed to warm up right here where I met. Um, and actually, oh, yeah. I checked the weather a little while ago. And since we've started, the temperatures rose in here in Central mm-hmm. Virginia. So it's going up in, I think it's supposed to be like 90 degrees this weekend. Yep. It was uh, 72 or 74. What was it I told you when I first 74. Started? It's yeah. 64 here is about 10 degree difference. So, well, you know, yesterday for us was cold. So maybe it's slowly getting to you. <laughs> I had frost this morning on a windshield. It snowed this morning. Spit some snow on me this morning. Mm. But it's warmed up. We're supposed to be in... Uh, 80s yeah. all weekend the awesome. high 80s so yes. those bass are coming to make sweet love and hey, i'm gonna man. stab them in the face with some hooks sorry Damn. to interrupt oh <laughs> All right. That's awesome. That's too funny. 
<laughs> All right. Well, guys, we appreciate you watching, listening, however mm -hmm. you do it. Um, like I said, we're on all the podcasting networks, Bass Cast Radio. Just type it in. Um, head on over and let's keep the the YouTube channel growing for Bass Geek. Let's get 100,000 subscribers and uh, let's get it up so we can get him free. Make sure you like that. <laughs> like, subscribe, hit the bell. And we appreciate you guys. And also, don't forget, check out uh, OutdoorObsessionsRadio.com. And that's where all of our podcasts are stored. Unless you're subscribed to iTunes, Google Podcasts. Oh, my Channel goodness. Cloud. Yes, so many of them. iHeartRadio. iHeartRadio, yep. So it's That's the so only many ones I can remember. But yeah, a bunch. <laughs> that's the biggest ones. So we appreciate you guys. Have a great night, everyone. And we will talk to you guys later.